everybody, and welcome back to another episode. I've got some bad news for you today. You are going to work until the day you die. Unless you listen to this episode and follow what I'm about to tell you. This is what most people don't do. I hate how easy planning and doing retirement is, but the execution is so difficult. So I want to lay out just seven easy steps that you can follow and start right now to prepare yourself and get where you need to go on your road to retirement. So let's jump in right here. Step number one, and this is the biggest mistake I see people make when I ask people, what does retirement look like? like what do you want to be doing? It's the same generic response. Oh, I want to spend more time with my friends and family and I want to work less, but that's it. They don't know what they're doing on a daily basis. They don't know what they're filling their time with. They don't nothing. There's no vision here. They have no clue how much money they even need to set aside. They have no clue how much of a nest egg they need to build up. They don't know how much uh, income they need to, to live off of. They don't take into account inflation. There's so many things missing. Then people get to like 50, 60 years old and wonder, you know, what the heck happened? Oh my gosh, I really need to step it up here. So step number one is reverse engineer retirement. How much money do you need to live off per month. What does your budget look like? If you're not keeping a budget every single month, wake up call. You need to, you need to be going through. There's a lot of great apps out there. I personally like personal capital. I think it's called empower now, but you need to be tracking everything down to the T on what you're spending and calculate how much money do you need per month per year to live off of? That is step one. Step two, calculate nest egg, divide your retirement annual expenses by 6%. Example, if you need your if, if you need your annual income to be ninety five thousand dollars, divide it by six percent, and that should give you about one point six million dollars. This is what you need to save towards. The reason is you've calculated what you need annually to live off of, and you can bank on pretty conservatively getting six percent on your money per year. You know, I, th I think I think treasuries are now at 6% or at least close to it. That's as risk-free of an investment as you can get. There's annuities. Uh, there's a lot of things that can dividend stock dividends. There's a lot of passive income rentals. A lot of things pay at least 6%. That's a very conservative amount that you can uh, confidently think that you'll, you'll get at least 6% in passive income. So that's kind of the magic number. could be a lot more, could be a little bit less some years, but 6% is a pretty safe bet. So if you take your annual expenses, divide it by 6%, that gives you your nest egg that you need to start saving towards. Now you have a goal. Now that you have a goal and something to work towards, you can construct a plan to get there. And that's step number three is create a plan. Have a monthly budget, save a portion of each paycheck, consistently invest, and use compound interest to your advantage. So you need to be consistently investing into something and having it grow and use the compound interest chart. This is what's going to shorten the pathway to your nest egg. We've all seen the compound interest charts where they start kind of slow and then they start taking off. That's what you need to look and calculate. So if you are not able to save a portion of each paycheck and consistently invest. Now it's time to go to step number four, which is figure out how to increase your income. Have your spouse get a job, negotiate a better salary, look for a new job, start a side hustle. Don't think that the opportunity is just going to come knocking on your door. I personally think if you're not getting raises every two years in your job, time to look elsewhere because I guarantee you, you can probably find a job out there that's going to pay you more money. Most people, they do not come up with a plan to negotiate a higher salary. I'm telling my wife right now, every I'm like, you need to ask every customer for a Google review. You need to bring coffees once a month in. You need to smooch people. Like You need to play this politics game. And I've already put it into her negotiation in year one. I forced her to do this. Uh, this is military branding coming out, telling my wife to do things. I was like, you need to negotiate that you'll get a pay bump year one based on your review. And I have her taking pictures of all of her five-star Google reviews when people mention her by name. And she's going to build this brag book. And she's asking employees to you know, send a text message to her telling her how awesome of a job that she's done. She's saving all the emails that her boss sends her on you know, way to go. She's saving all the days that she hits quota and hits performance. And she's going to present this big book to her boss on all this great things she's done and be like, hey, I want to raise. And it's going to be very difficult for them to say no. So there's always something you can do to increase your income. I don't want to hear it. Step number five, 
lower your expenses. Be honest with what you can afford. Stop going broke trying to look wealthy. Review your monthly budget. See where you can cut. You'll find ways to save. I I was spending like $25,000 a year in restaurants. I hate to admit it. it was it was a big spend of mine. I probably spent I think one year I spent like $40,000 traveling. I mean it was it was crazy. I had so much fun though. And it was all bucket list stuff. I wouldn't take it back. But I could have optimized a little bit if I'm being honest. I could have done things a little bit better, but it was like sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year and stuff that I I could kind of you know pull back on a little bit. You know, I'm I'm pretty good when it comes to just. I don't like material things. Like I I still live in a rental because my wife and I don't know where we want to build yet. We're about to have a family. And we're not sure where we're going to stay. I, I don't have any bad debt. I own everything outright. I drive a a Rav Four. Uh, you know, I've, I've got buddies and friends of mine who drive really nice luxury cars and live in houses that they own. They're much bigger than mine and they're completely broke, completely broke. So be honest with what you can afford. Get in there. Look at what you can trim up on your budgets. Get realistic. I promise you, you don't have to do the not buy coffee every single day and do like the Mr. Money mustache where you just like walk everywhere and save guys. You don't have to do that, but I promise you just being aware of what you're spending will allow you to to reduce uh, what you're currently spending. You first have to put an eye on it and know where the bleeding is, though. And that's how you can lower your expenses. Step number six is get leverage on the result. This is where most people fail. They do not get any leverage on the result. They don't put any emotion or emphasis on the outcome they want. And as a result, they end up fizzling out and they don't stick to their plan. So the brain starts working when it knows it will be rewarded. What fun things do you want to do? What does retirement look like? Write down your vision. I can tell you that my wife and I have a vision board with all the places we want to visit, you know, some of the things that I want to own, some of the things I want to do, you know, like one of my goals, I want to give away a house. And I see it every single day. And I've attached like a reward to being able to do these things. So when you can attach a specific outcome to something or a consequence, you're going to build a lot more motivation. I I told my sister one time, she was looking for a job and she just would not fill job applications out. And I said, Venmo me $300. And she said, why? I said, just do it. And luckily she trusts me and she did it. I go, okay, you have five days to fill out 20 job applications to uh, places in, in Nashville. Because I was trying to get her to move here. That's what it was. And if you don't send me proof, I'm going to send your ex-boyfriend $300 worth of dip in cigarettes. And I promise you, I will do it. And she knew I was being serious. That day, 10 hours later, at like 11 o'clock at night, she sends me an, uh, a text message. And it's all these applications that she'd fill out. She goes, give me my money back. She was able to get leverage over herself in that situation. It took a little bit of prompting from me, but that's what leverage is. Figure out how to get leverage over yourself first. Anything, it could be a reward. My brother recently bought himself a weekly massage for like six months because he hit a certain goal. He's like, dude, I, I don't do a good job of buying me enough stuff. Like, Learn to reward yourself, right? We don't do that enough. Learn to love yourself more, especially when you hit your goals. But you got to figure out how to get leverage over yourself. I promise you can do it. Big part of it is it starts with a vision. You have got to imagine what you are going to be doing during retirement, how you're going to be spending your time, all the things you want to buy and do. It's very, very important that you do that. And number seven, step seven is after you have created leverage, continually increase that leverage on yourself. Get more and more leverage. So again, you know, what get very specific about what life looks like when you retire, go book a really nice hotel room that has these big, huge windows, like from floor to ceiling and, and get some uh, dry erase markers and go write your vision out on that. Like, it's really cool when you create this and, and write out what your blueprint is for life, and what you want to do. And if money was not an obstacle, write that down because that's the, the dreaming is fun. That's where ideas are born. That's where the motivation comes from because when things aren't going according to the plan and your expenses are going up and you've got all this unexpected stuff that's happening, you're going to want to give up. But it's that vision that you keep and hold in your mind that's going to allow you to push through the next level. What will you miss out on? What regrets will you have? So don't just make it a positive. In other words, don't just put carrots, but what are the negative consequences that are going to have to happen if you don't hit this retirement? 
Imagine what it's going to be like being 80 years old working at Walmart. Imagine what it's life, what you missed out on because you could not create the retirement that you wanted. What does it mean for your friends and family? Maybe you couldn't send your grandkids to the schools that they want. Whatever that is, use negative consequences as well. These are the seven steps. If you can execute these, I promise you will one day retire. I hope you all enjoyed this episode.